Okay, so here's our initial lab configuration. Um, it's very simple. We're going to kind of do this step by step. So the, the first Nexus on the left uh, has three ports, uh, Ethernet 1, 1, 2, and 3, connected to the Nexus on the right, which is Ethernets 1, 2, and 3. We're going to configure the connection of ports 1 and 2 as a dedicated VPC peer link. Um, and then the, the third port is basically going to be a normal data traversal link, which means we're going to dedicate the ether channel uh, for VPC communication between the two 5Ks, and then we'll use the third link for normal you know, data traffic. And this is the recommended configuration. You can use the VPC peer link for, um, uh, for regular traffic if you want to, but um, if you have the port count, it's better to, uh, to use that as a dedicated. That's the recommended configuration. Uh, let's go ahead and do some initial configuration. So first thing I want to do is show an interface brief. And you can see that we have the three ports showing up uh, and connected. Um, so we're going to go ahead and configure those up. So let's go ahead and do configure uh, interface Ethernet 1 slash 1. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's no 10 gig Ethernet or fast Ethernet. It's on the Nexus platform, everything is just Ethernet. Uh, if it's an Ethernet interface, whether whatever speed it is, it's just Ethernet, so interface E11. So we're going to do a description. We're going to say peer link uh, to um, R3. Uh, so we'll put in YTO 5596-R3. Okay. Um, so we'll put the description in. We'll change the switch port mode over to trunk. Um, we'll do the same thing on the other side. Uh, so in this case, we'll do uh, interface E11 description uh, peer link to lotto 5596-R2. And we'll do switch port mode trunk. Um, the other thing is we're going to make it a port channel. So we're going to say channel group. Uh, we'll call it channel group 1 on this side. And we'll call it channel group 1 on this side. Okay. Um, the other thing we have to do is we have to enable VPC. So um, those are done using feature commands. Um, so on the Nexus box, you have to basically tell it you want to use feature VPC to, to turn that on so that it'll, it'll actually work. Um, so that's the basic you know, interface configuration. We're going to do um, the second one as well. Um, so we're going to say description, we'll just copy this from here to here, like that. And then we'll do the same thing. And then we'll do the same thing here. Okay, so now we're doing our, our basic uh, configuration here. And I gotta put channel group one in there as well. Okay, so now we have the basic interface configuration to configure an ether channel on, uh, on these two links. Uh, so basically, the, the two are, are going to be talking back and forth, and then we'll do some basic uh, VPC configuration. So the first thing you have to do uh, when you configure VPC, um, as you'll see, you, you have to specify a domain. So we're going to say domain ID 1. Uh, same thing here. Now, you notice that I can go ahead and configure this even when I'm in interface mode. So I can do the same thing. I didn't have to hit exit. I've been kind of hitting exit just to keep it consistent. But Nanix OS is great because you could do commands uh, anywhere. If I want to do a show command right here, I can say show interface brief. And I can get show interface without using the do command as you'd normally do um, in, uh, in iOS. So that's uh, a little bit of a difference there um, with, uh, with NX OS. So let's take a look at, at uh, the VPC commands that are available to us, the ones that, that we're going to you know, take a look at here. Um, so for us, the, the big one is the system priority, So um, and then also the role. So if you say role here, and you could say role priority, um, you could specify a value. So the, the lower the value of uh, the, that means that you're the, the master. So generally, um, you know, in our case, we're going to make R2 the, the master. So we'll say role priority one. Um, and then over on the other side as well, um, we'll go in here and we'll say role priority two. Okay, so that's, that's kind of simple there. Um, and then um, RF 
F is going to be management. Alright, and then the source is 10.93.233.138. Okay, and then on this side, we're going to say peer keep alive. Destination is 139. Okay, now that you have the, the keep alive, now you have to go to the interface port channel one and you have to say DPC peer link. And the same thing here. So interface port channel one, DPC peer link. And that specifies that the that, that particular port channel is the is the actual peer link. Um, so the other thing we'll do is switch port. So let's take a look at our config here. Show again. All right, so there you go. Okay, so those are the same. So let's do a quick show VPC. There you go. So that's how quick it is to get that running. And you can see that the, the adjacency is formed okay. Configuration is success, primary versus secondary. So we're in, we're in good shape here, right? Um, so we have our, our peer link up. Um, there's one VLAN in it right now. We haven't created any others. So this is, this is exactly where you wanna be. So let's go ahead and do a show run here just to kind of, it, actually you can do a show run VPC. That's another really good thing about NXOS is you can go ahead and do show run commands for features. So this will show you all the relevant configuration for um, the virtual port channel configuration. Okay, so let's review. Our initial configuration consisted of two Nexus 5500s, three ports, one for regular data traversal, one ether channel for a dedicated peer link. And let's take a look at the configuration. So the left side, the router two, um, basically you have a VPC domain created. You have to enable the feature in Nexus OS. You have to enable features. So we enabled the VPC feature, created a domain, set a role priority. So router two is the uh, role priority one. Router three is the role priority two. You have to set the keep alive source and destination. This is for the peer link between the two switches. I'm using the management zero interface, which the default VRF in this command is the management VRF, so it doesn't show up in the config. If you're using a different VRF, say you have two SVIs um, that you're using as the source and destination, but they're in a different VRF, you could specify that on the command line. I have the two ethernet interfaces in channel group one, set as a trunk, and then on channel group one, um, speed 1000 and spanning tree port type network are automatic, but the key thing is you're specifying that port channel as the VPC peer link. So that is the configuration. And then let's take a look at, at the show VPC command, right? So you see that the adjacency is formed okay. The peer keep alive uh, packets are working just fine. Configuration consistency is something where you have to make sure that both sides are configured the same. So in a future video, we'll have a, a section on config synchronization, which is a feature that does an auto config sync. But at the beginning config without that, you just have to make sure that both sides are configured and, and there's, a, there's a check that in the VPC when it's formed that makes sure that the configuration is the same on both. And then obviously we only have one uh, VLAN active right now. And as we add more VLANs and, and make them part of the virtual port channel, um, they, they will come online. And also you can see here that you have the VPC role as primary and secondary, just like we configured with the role priority command. So that's the uh, wrap up for this configuration video and we'll move on to the next step.